So I got a quick video for you today. I'm trying to find out where to put my bend line with this pan brake. The difference between a pan brake and a press brake, press brakes come straight down and then you've got your die down here so you can use your center line bend and uh, bend from there and it should come up evenly on both sides. So that way your offset on each will be even. But with the pan brake, it clamps and then it rolls the other side up. So you're losing uh, length on one side and adding length to the other. So the first thing you wanna do is make a coupon. So I used six inches by two inches. And I did that because six inches is good enough that you can get precise and it can get divided by three inches really easy. And then two inches because it bends super easy. I don't have to use a lot of material. And also I still got enough, um, it's still wide enough that I can fit it into my pan brake and still get it nice and square just by using the center line. So next you'll want to put a center line in there, uh, three inches if it's six inches. And I have a router table, so I use that to cut it out. That way everything would be really precise. Uh, just do the best you can with what you got. And it'll actually etch these lines in also, which it makes it super easy. Then you're going to bend it on that center line at a, a 90. And you want to get it as perfect as you can. And uh, make sure it's not less than a 90 because that's going to give you problems. So, see how it hits right here? You can't be as precise. So you're losing a lot. So just make sure it's as 90 as you can get. A uh, hair over would be better than less. So then you're going to measure these two distances. And let's just say uh, this one is 3.15 um, and this one is 2.95. Uh, now what you're going to do is you're going to subtract this, this from that so that you get the uh, amount of difference in between them. So 3.15 minus 2.95 I haven't done math in a long time let's see 0 uh, that's 20 so 0.2 inches of difference it's probably not going to be this big and you're actually the one I'm just making up numbers so then once you've got this you're going to divide that in half so it'd be 0.1 so that's how far towards your um, clamping, so your clamp's gonna be right on that clamp line. So that'll be 0.1 inches. So then you'll mark that, and what I did was I put a little arrow so I knew this is the clamping side, uh, because it's so close that it, you'd have to get out your calipers and measure to figure out which side is the clamping side or not. So when you're marking it, mark which side the clamp line is going to be on. And then you'll bend your new piece with this new uh, bend line. And you'll measure these out. And hopefully they'll be equal. So it would probably be 3.1, 3.1. And if it is, then you're golden. If not, uh, you'll have to do the same thing again to move it and depending on you know if this ended up uh, being a little short or your bend your original bend line wasn't in the right spot you might have to adjust that and the other cool thing is this will also give you how much you need to remove to get exactly uh, three inches so you'd have to remove a total of 0.2 from this piece to get your uh, overall of 3 inches by 3 inches. So it would be, and actually this is pretty close to what it is on mine, so it would be 
inches long to get a three by three because it it doesn't technically grow but this bend radius uses less material than if you go straight down and then straight over so that's where your growth comes from is the bend radius so it, on mine it does add about 0.2 so anyways that's how you find that out and then what I ended up doing for the 45 that worked really well I tried bending it on this line and then also I put it halfway in between so just divided this in half so 0.05 and then the way that I checked it to see if it was uh, even on both sides is I laid it flat on my table, put my 1, 2, 3 block underneath it to where it's resting up against it, and then I measured with my calipers up to here, flipped it around, measured again, and it came out even with the, um, you know, half of the 90 degree bend line. All right, so what ended up working for me is 0 0.07 inches away, 90 to, or at the 90 degree, and that ended up being exactly three by three. And then for the 45 degree, it was half of 0 0.07. So I just divided that in half, uh, put my mark there in between the two, and bend it at 45 and that left it exactly the same on both sides. So I've been messing around with my uh, router table a lot lately and uh, that's probably why I haven't been making videos because I've been trying to figure everything out. But to get these perfect I routed them out so that way I knew that each one was going to be exactly the same instead of cutting them out on the bandsaw and having a little bit of air. Uh, so that's how I know that these are as perfect as I can get them with the stuff that I have. Well, that's the quick video I got for you. Uh, if you're interested in uh, some routering stuff, I don't know if you guys are or not, but let me know and I can start showing you that stuff. I've been making a bunch of things. I made air tool holder with bottle openers because you got to have those. I haven't finished it up. It's going to have end caps and stuff. And I also routed out another dirt bike stand, but this time I routed everything and uh, used bend lines and all that stuff so I can get it more precise. But yeah, if you like this video and if you want to see some more of that stuff, just let me know. You guys have a good one.